much of what we accept as scientific fact today is not actually fact, but much of it is based on theories that have been shown to be very close to being proven to be true or something to that effect. And then that theory sort of becomes ingrained in our culture, in our lives, in our education system. And we start to believe that these theories are actually factual scientific facts. Energy seems to be the, the source that drives, the driving source behind everything around us and everything inside us as well. And, uh, and how to define energy continues to remain and to be a very elusive answer. I don't know if we're ever going to really be able to comprehend energy until we or what energy truly is and how it manifests itself. Where does energy come from? You can't actually ask what energy is without asking where does it come from? And, uh, and I guess that's why those questions follow each other. Because somewhere, somehow, the energy comes from somewhere. And if we study conventional um, astrophysics and science and cosmology and physics, it tells us that everything comes from the Big Bang. Right, So they tell us that all the energy in the universe comes from that primordial source called the singularity. The singularity. Well, what is the singularity? It's, it seems to be this theoretical, and again, every time we deal with mainstream physics, mainstream science, mainstream chemistry, mainstream geology, mainstream archaeology, there is more theory than actual factual scientific fact that has been presented to us. Much of what we accept as scientific fact today is not actually fact, but much of it is based on theories that have been shown to be very close to being proven to be true or something to that effect. And then that theory sort of becomes ingrained in our culture, in our lives, in our education system. And we start to believe that these theories are actually factual scientific facts. And that's one of the big problems I have personally with mainstream education, that they don't move uh, on and say, wow, we used to think this was this, but now we believe it's something else. So, and there's this constant uh, resistance to change, to new knowledge and breakthrough discoveries. You and I know very well about the resistance of mainstream academia to new discoveries. But so could you come back to the energy thing? It's one of my favorite subjects because it seems to be the fundamental source that drives everything in our reality, whether it's kinetic energy, whether it's sound energy, whether it's magnetic energy, whether it's electromagnetic energy, whether it's some other force, some other kinds of energies that we were told exist, but we don't really know whether they're real or not. So, again, theoretical energies that have been proposed to us. So, the answer to what is energy is a fantastic question. The answers to that remain as elusive today as they were 120 years ago. Energy is the source that drives, or the, the, the ether, or the whatever, the, that drives everything in existence. Uh, and those energies, we need to look, look at exactly what you said, and look at other kinds, other forms of energies. And that's where you start getting into non-conventional research and areas. Now, in, in mainstream physics and mainstream science, the area of sound, uh, of studying sound as a source of energy, is nothing new. Sound-based weapons and military equipment has been used and developed by the military, military companies and, and weapon companies for, for decades and decades. Sound being used as a tool and as a weapon. Focused sound, laser beam technology as opposed to laser beam technology. Sound focused in a beam. So when we start looking at other, other kinds of sources of energy, we start to realize how the, the energy that's been shoved in our face is really most likely a deception. And behind that lies a great cover-up to prevent humanity from tapping into what many of us would call free energy or zero-point energy or the unlimited, infinite source of energy that powers the universe around us and the universe within us. That energy, those energetic fields that are all driven by sound, resonance and vibration and frequencies all interconnected, that together is connected to what energy really is and how that energy of creation 
is used in the universe around us, in the world around us. I'm talking about the cosmos around us and in the world around us on the surface of our world, of our earth, and also inside our bodies. How everything functions through the same interconnectedness of energies and the force, the source of energy that drives everything. So it is now very clear that the energy that I'm referring to manifests itself into toroidal fields, little toruses. And the moment um, anybody starts to study toroidal fields or vortex fields and torsion fields or scalar energy, those are all the same words and same expressions for the same study and the same source of energy. And that would be toroidal vortex field energies. But anybody that studies sound, resonance and frequency will understand that they're inextricably connected. You can't have one without the other. Just because you can't hear a sound doesn't mean there's no frequency and doesn't mean that there is no resonance. Because when you, you can see something manifest in front of you and not be able to hear it, like you know, the, the study of cymatics and the sand on a metal plate. When you put sound frequencies through it, you can see the physical manifestation of shape and form out of vibration and vibrational resonance. We perceive it as sound. So in this density of ours, sound manifests the vibrations, the resonance, and the frequencies of, those, of that resonance and vibration manifest as sound that we perceive in our ears. And this is our relationship with resonance and frequency. We, we hear a sound. And it's very important to understand the, the, the role that sound plays, plays in our anatomy, in our environment, in the manifestation of shapes in this density in our world, manifestation of DNA, manifestation of plants, of insects, of, of everything around us, um, the, shape, the shape of crystals, the shape of sacred geometry that we come into is, is manifested through sound, resonance and frequency. So the original people of Australia have a creation story that says time began when the supernatural beings awoke and broke through the surface of the earth. So imagine the surface of the earth being something like this, that metal plate being the surface of the earth and the supernatural beings broke to the surface of the earth and they created the surface of the earth with three sacred songs. This is from Hans Jenny's brilliant video, um, Cymatics. This is powder on a metal plate. It's not a liquid or a jelly, it's powder. You can see landscapes being formed here over extended periods of time. Mountains can form, valleys, volcanoes, all to do with the sound of the earth coming out of the earth. Now watch that. So it's interesting that, that I link this to the Aboriginal people or original people of Australia and the three sacred songs. And it's very similar to this picture that I took from an aeroplane flying over Western Australia. And you can start seeing how that kind of landscape would have been formed from the cymatics of the, the sound of the earth itself. And then Eric Larson is the guy that created the, the cymoscope. And this is when you can suddenly see how the human voice has potential to create infinitely. That with our voice, we have the potential to create everything and anything we can imagine. That we are indeed creators. And remember, every thought you have also has a frequency and a vibration, has a resonance, just like your voice. manifest in the toroidal shape. And some of these pictures, the images of the of this um, cymoscope images, 
show, give, tell us that it was these sounds, the images of the sound that actually inspired religious symbols, that beautiful cross in a circle at the center of some of these cymatic photographs give us a very clear indication that the creators of the religious symbols knew exactly what they were talking about, that the source of, of, of creation is sound itself. And that takes us to what sound does. Sound pretty much does everything you can imagine because it's a source of creation. Ancient civilizations understood sound and frequency and they used it for everything. They used it as a tool and they also used it to control and manipulate humanity. This is nothing new. We know by now that the pineal gland is, is pretty much what represents the all-seeing eye of Horus. It's a receiver, it's a transmitter, it's a powerful tool that we should be using, but we're not because it was manipulated with and, and probably compromised. And it seems that these ancient beings, these either bird-headed beings or winged beings, used these cone-shaped tools and other techniques to manipulate our pineal gland and manipulate our DNA. They controlled us, the tree of life or the DNA, and they probably used sound and frequency to do that with. But what's important is to, to look at, so we got a pine cone, a cone-shaped tool in his hand, and that weird wristwatch that has got these 12 cone shapes pointing at the center. And then also this here. This here is, looks just like the stone tools that I've been picking up, a cone-shaped tool on his arm. Seems like everything is encoded here when they, when they draw these or carve these things. It's not just accidental. Everything has got a, a reason why it's there. So you'll realize why that is so important because this, this wristwatch with those 12 cones pointing at the middle shows us that they weren't only controlling our thoughts and our minds with sound and frequency and magnetics in ancient times, but we've been doing it for, for ages now. There's your all-seeing eye of Horus, there's your six, uh, half of that weird wristwatch with the six cones facing the middle, all controlling us with, with, with sound and frequency. And, uh, and this brings us to using sound as a tool in technology. Sound creates light. It's very obvious. We know that God said, let there be light. And you can do this yourself by attaching a speaker to an LED light and see what happens. The Ankh was used as a healing tool. Um, we know that uh, from, from images like this, um, and there's a lot more to be said about this. The medicine wheel uh, is a cross in a circle that represents sound, that primordial source of sound. The chosen the Native American healers knew that, that sound could cure and could heal. <clears throat> This is a Sumerian seal of, that represents sound and also this is where the swastika has its origin in sound and resonance. The Ark of the Covenant was obviously a very powerful sound energy generating device. Um, it, uh, it, was a, it was also a communication device that Moses could communicate with God and with his people when he sat on the mercy seat below the, the, the angels and the, their wings and was also a very powerful device that brought down the walls of Jericho because obviously gave off some sort of a low frequency vibration and then with a blast from a trumpet and a shout the walls came tumbling down so either an electromagnetic pulse or something of that kind that brought the walls of Der Jericho down. Royal Raymond Dreyf, we you should know by now that cured with the man that found the cure for all disease with sound and resonance were converted to electric impulses and right here in Sedona in a library in Sedona is his handwritten manuscript that you can read all the his handwritten frequencies that he wrote down for cure all the for cures for all the disease this all the different um, uh, cancers uh, this is for diphtheria uh, this is for tuberculosis we become creators and can manifest anything with sound and this is why we now know that sound is the ultimate source of free energy. And Nikola Tesla knew this. He knew that the earth rings like a bell and he used the sound of the earth where, because it constantly rings, it never stops. He used it as a source of energy to create his free energy device. And this is where we realize that sound and magneticism is inextricably connected. It's sound that creates magnetic fields and moving magnetic fields create electricity. It's in that order that creation seems to happen. So we don't live in an electromagnetic universe, we live in a magneto-electric universe.